Well, welcome to the Dashboard Dojo. Uh, in today's session, we'll cover formulas for reporting, part two, part two. Uh, the second round, we'll do a bit more hands-on than we did last time. Um, if you have not set up your dev org yet, uh, there is a bit.ly link at the bottom of this screen, and Kyle has been very kindly dropping it into the chat. Um, it takes about 10 minutes to set up the dev org. These are special dev orgs that have thousands of records in them that make them useful for reporting. These dev orgs also have something called the Trailhead Data Manager, which you can essentially click on and, and update the data. It basically moves the dates forward for opportunities and things. The third step is that this bit.ly link has a private app exchange app with sample reports and dashboards that we'll use today. So, so glad that you can join us. Let's get started. So my name is David Carnes. I'm the, the founder and chairman of OpFocus. Today, we also have Kyle Shagnon, who's been amazing uh, helping us keep this all organized and running. So thank you, Kyle. Happy to be here. So today, uh, we'll, we'll cover the setting up your dev org. Of, Two more times. Uh, I'll just introduce myself a little bit more fully, and then we'll get into Waza and Shi'i. So basically techniques and just practice in the system. So we have four hands-on examples today for uh, doing cool things, row level formulas, prev group val, parent group val. Those are great ones to learn. Um, uh, and then we'll walk through a, an exercise on uh, a joined, um, a cross block uh, formula. We'll talk about some upcoming dojo topics. In fact, I'd love your help on picking a few future topics for the spring. We'll talk about some of the upcoming OpFocus training events, and then we'll get to Q&A. All right, so as I mentioned before, if you've just joined us, thank you for joining us uh, at, the, at the Dashboard Dojo. If you have not set up your dev org yet, these are special dev orgs that have thousands of records in them. They also have this feature called the Trailhead Data Manager, which will move the dates forward, super useful in reporting. Um, and the third step with this, if you've been to one of our sessions before, we just ask you to do this third step, which is to install a private app exchange app, which has samples that we'll use today. It has a bunch of starters for reports, and then it has all the answers for the things that we'll go through today so that you have formulas that you can take home and, and, and use um, in your own systems. All right. So a little bit about myself. Uh, so I uh, founded and am currently chairman and chief evangelist of OpFocus. We're a 50-person consulting shop in the U.S. and Canada. We work with SaaS companies on their revenue operations. Uh, I've been working on Salesforce certifications forever. I don't think of them so much as a, about how, how many of them I have. I think of about how many I don't have. So that's uh, it's funny. Um, uh, I know a lot of you have been working on your certs as well. I've been part of the Platform Champion program for a number of years. Really great group uh, if you haven't been part of it. I also thought to uh, share that I am a fan of Kurukuru Zushi. So what is that? If you haven't been to Japan and you find yourself heading over to Japan, it's kind of a cool thing. When I was a student, um, uh, I didn't have a ton of money for lunch. So I'd find these sort of cheap places to go. And uh, it's basically conveyor belt sushi. You sit down, take some green tea, and you pull plates off of the conveyor belt. And the word kurukuru comes from, it's onomatopoeia uh, for the sound that the conveyor belt makes, kurukuru, 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 kuru, as it goes around and around. And the chef is in the middle of the conveyor belt. Uh, and it's just a great way to have lunch. And at the end of your lunch, you've got a stack of plates of all the different things that you've eaten and they count up and the different colors have different uh, uh, costs. So that's a uh, kuru kuru zushi. If you haven't done that before, I suggest it's a lot of fun. All right, so for today, we're gonna talk about uh, formula use cases. We'll just do a quick recap about what is a formula. If you didn't see the first, uh, formulas for reporting. We have that up on the Dashboard Dojo site. It's also on the OpFocus YouTube channel. Um, we, it's, I think, uh, the right level of depth if you really want to get a good understanding of row-level formulas, summary formulas, cross-block formulas. We also talked about custom formula fields in that. All right. All right, so Mike, uh, Michelle asked the question, will we be talking about building percentages with parent group val? You know, I don't know if the example is parent, uh, percentages, but we're certainly gonna do percentages with prev group val uh, today. Um, Robert mentioned that the Trailhead data manager isn't working. Um, you know, let's not worry about it for today. I don't think the examples are gonna matter. Uh, sometimes it's a little fussy. There's 
an app that you can click on called the Trailhead Data Manager. There's a tab called the Trailhead Data Manager. There's a button that says run DTC data, and that just updates the data in your system. But if you don't do it, you'll still be able to do the exercises. All right. So last, last call for setting up your dev work, and we'll get started. Um, so uh, this dev org, I mentioned the private app exchange app has some examples in it. Basically, when you download that and install that into the dev org, there are two report folders. There's one dashboard folder. So there's a report folder with starters that we're going to use today. So basically sort of got the basics in place for a report, and we'll use that for some of the exercises. I also have all of the, the uh, answers. So let's just take a look in the system. So on the reports tab, I've just clicked on the starters folder. So I went under all folders, clicked on the starters folder, and this is what's in there. So these are what we're gonna use for some of the starting points today. Um, there's also a folder in here called answers. And these are ones that, you know, you've got all the answers to a bunch, including ones that we won't talk about today. We might talk about some of these in the third session. But for the, uh, Michelle asked the question about uh, parent group Val and look at that. I think we have an example with percentages. Yes, we do. So Michelle, there's an example in the answers with percentages for, um, okay, Michelle's happy. That's great. Thank you. I'm glad. Glad we can make your day. Um, all right. So uh, before we get started, I just find it great to hear from those of you that might like to share. So since our last session, you know, anybody... Has anybody done anything interesting with formulas to solve reporting challenges lately? Um, if you'd like to speak up, what you could do is use the raise hand function. Uh, Kyle will unmute mute you. Maybe you share your name, where you're based, and if you have um, something interesting that you've done. Uh, so no pressure, but if you'd like to share, that would be fun. How's it going, Tim? Hey, it's going well, thanks. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Um, so this uh, past couple of weeks, I've been launching a new feature, and one of the things I had done prior to the, the last session that we had is I had a couple of formula fields that I had created solely for the purpose of fields that needed to be in reports. They were sort of doing some um, I love it. Yep. forecasting and some kind of scenario building, and um, I was a little hesitant to create them as actual fields on the object, but it was the easiest way to do it. And so because I hadn't launched it yet, um, yesterday I actually played around with saying, you know, do I really need this as a field or would this be better served as just a formula in the report? And so I, I played with it and I, it, it was, I sort of copied and pasted and then I realized there were some things that were different in the syntax between the actual formula and the field. And, and I kind of played with that, got comfortable with that. I still have one little bug and trying to figure out why it's doing something a little differently in the report. But it was cool to see that I can set that up in a yes. report, abandon yes. the field. And then that also leaves me though with a question in general about these things, which is thinking about um, if it is really important and it's something that other people might wanna play with, it seems a little fragile having it as a field in a report that could easily be deleted or edited by somebody, and then yeah, there's yep. so no if, kind of like system of record for it. I, you know, Tim, uh, you brought up so many great points, and thank you for joining us again. I really appreciate all, all of your the input that you offer in these sessions. Sure. Um, you know, for years we didn't really have a lot of formula writing. There was summary formulas, but we couldn't do a lot of the formulas on the reports, and so we do them just using one of our 500 custom formula fields sorry, custom fields, up to 500 custom fields per object, you might use a few, not put them on a page layout, but they'd be used for reporting. I think to Tim's example, there are a lot of use cases where, you know, maybe I won't create the custom formula field now on the object if I just have one use case for a report. Um, but if I have multiple use cases, I might actually just create the formula field or Tim, like you shared, if you have any concern about uh, people, um, you know, or somehow getting messed up. If I'm running the business off of that calculation, Tim, yeah. I'm probably going to create a custom formula field and that way yeah. nobody can change it. Nobody can mess it up. Okay. So if like, if, if big business decisions are being made, we'll probably use a custom formula field and then report on that. And then, you know, the calculations pretty safe. 
Yeah, absolutely. And in this particular example, the uh, the person who was kind of trying to articulate the requirement, I could tell they still weren't hundred percent sure. So I was like, you know what? If I put it in a report, they can play with it. We it could kind of evolve over time without requiring an update to the field. So that's where I went with the report just to see how it great. Goes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah, thank you, Kyle. If we, if we don't have anyone else, we might just jump right into the exercises. Okay, we'll just keep going. Looking for your nod, Kyle. Yep. yep. Okay, great. All right. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, um, uh, you know, and if you if you want to share, you could either drop into the chat. Um, if you think of ideas for future dashboard dojos, if you drop those into the chat. We made a mistake last time. We didn't download the chat before we ended the session, and all of a sudden the chat's gone. It's like, wait a minute, we have all this other information about the session, but not the chat. So we'll make sure we download it today so we don't we don't lose what's thrown in there. Um, so, you know, just a quick recap, what is a formula? So a formula is an algorithm that derives its value from other fields, expressions, or values. We can use formulas pretty much throughout Salesforce. So uh, Tim had mentioned on custom formula fields, we also can create them directly on reports, but they can be used throughout the system. It's such a good skill set. Uh, Tim brought up such an interesting thing that they can be slightly different if you're creating a formula field on uh, it within a custom field versus if you're creating it within a formula. I feel like even some of the like the field reference names are might be slightly different. I, I, I haven't really dug into the differences, but there are differences. So if you try to do it, Tim didn't copy from the formula you created on a field and drop it into a formula on a report, you may have to do some work like he shared. So these formulas are made up of a few different ingredients, values, field references, and functions. Functions are really the where we do the heavy lifting. And you can see here in red, we have a few examples of functions that are being used. And some of them are uh, related to logic and some of them are related to math and some of them are related to maneuvering dates. But really getting to know functions and getting comfortable with them is an important thing as are just understanding the operators. So we have uh, basically four different kinds of formulas we used in reporting. And we went through these in detail in the first formulas for reporting session. But basically today we're gonna to focus on row level formulas, summary formulas and cross block formulas. So just a quick recap on functions. This is a predefined formula essentially that performs calculations. It just does the heavy lifting. It's, these are absolutely your friend as a formula writer. There are over 80 of them available in Salesforce. Um, and the syntax matters. So I, we've got a bit.ly link in here for the entire list of all the operators and functions. And it's worth reading through because you may find a way to solve a problem. Um, I mentioned the operators. Um, uh, and this, this is where things get kind of interesting because when you create a formula field, this uh, screenshot here, is the list of operators that are that are available. When you create a row level formula, this is your wimpy little list of uh, operators. Believe it or not, you can still use the other operators. So even if you do not see a function or an operator when you're creating a row level formula or a summary formula, it's worth trying it out because there may be more that are available uh, to use. Uh, Chris asked a question about formulas um, specifically can it be used to combine text pieces from multiple records? He wants to concatenate the names of all child records and display in a text field. Ah, so if you had said to me, can we concatenate information from the parent and one child? Absolutely. But it sounds like you wanna glom, you wanna essentially stack all the child and perhaps show it up at the parent level. Uh, um, we would either need to roll it up somehow or need some other mechanism to drop it in, let's say, up into a text area up above. So um, uh, I'll, I'm going to think about that as we go, uh, but I'm, I'm thinking that they'd essentially be in separate rows, so we may not be able to get across the rows that way. Um, so uh, he, Chris has added, correct the name, the record names of all child records. So. If you're saying you want to, let, let's say that we have an account and there are five opportunities and you want to take something about the account name and you want to update opportunity values, we can create a role level formula that concatenates information from the parent and one child. 
and corrects, and then you essentially repeat it across each of the individual sub records. So that that could work. Um, I'll have to just keep going, and Chris, we could circle back on that. Um, so we mentioned we're going to focus on three types of formulas. The first one is a row level formula. We can now have one up to one of these per report. So this is the most recent type of formula that Salesforce introduced. Uh, we can evaluate essentially an individual record on a report. So this works with numbers and text and date, date time and pick lists. Uh, these can be used for grouping and filters. And these can also feed summary formulas, which is kind of interesting. So every now and then you need to just twist the data slightly to get it in a position to then go do a summary formula. So that absolutely can work. These, however, cannot be used in buckets or in cross filters. Um, and just to do a couple of quick examples. So this, we won't do this example, but just to show you, this is similar to what Tim mentioned earlier. Um, you know, some of you may have turned on the free feature called opportunity scoring. So uh, if you have sales cloud, you can use opportunity scoring for free. This introduces an AI generated score. And, you know, if you wanted to do something with that score, other than just look at it, you could multiply it by the amount and you could create a score weighted amount. And I've just, um, you know, to Tim's point, like in the olden days, I probably would have created a custom formula field to do this math. Now, because we have row level formulas, I can just do it on the report itself. And this is what the formula that I came up with, sort of simple. If the text of the stage name, and we use the text function to extract that pick list value, if that pick list value equals closed one, then just show the amount because it's essentially 100% of the amount. Otherwise, if it's closed lost, we have a nested if there to, to do that a logic test, put a zero. Otherwise, we get to the, the heart of the matter here, take the opportunity score, multiply it by the amount, and divide it by 100. So essentially, it's making the score into a percent. So it's a different type of weighting, but it is kind of interesting. You take what the reps say, maybe you multiply the reps, what they say the amount is times the probability, and you get that expected revenue field. Well, it's kind of nice to compare that with what the AI is saying. So this is a nice example for just solving the problem with a row level formula. Um, just one quick demo example. So uh, somebody posted somewhere, uh, it might've been on the report and dashboard chatter group at Salesforce that they wanted to filter a dashboard and they wanted to filter it across a single month at a time for all the opportunities that have that close date in that month. And it, we, we can filter dashboards with dates. However, we couldn't do this. So um, the solution was to actually create a report with a row level formula field that converts the close date into the text of January or February or March. And you can see here in my screenshot that uh, if it's January 25th, 2020, it turns into January. If it's January 1st, 2021, it's also January. But that essentially maneuvered the data into a position that I could use it in a dashboard filter. So that was kind of a fun little challenge to solve. And just to show you that quickly, uh, so the formula itself, uh, I'm actually grouping by that over here. And if we were to just take a quick look at that, that row level formula. So if I just click on it here, we can see the row level formula. And I'm just using a case function to say, if the case of the month of the close month equals number one, then it's January. If it's two, it's February and so on. So it's a pretty straightforward row level formula. But what that allows us to do is add this filter on this dashboard, which says, if it's February, give me all the February data. So I didn't really make this a very pretty dashboard. But uh, why isn't this refreshing? Come on, let's refresh. OK, now here it's showing me. So I didn't do a ton with this dashboard. I was really interested in just getting this piece to work, the filter. But it was kind of a fun solution for something that wasn't obvious how to do it directly on a dashboard. And we just sort of took a step back and thought, I wonder if I can maneuver the data using a row level formula. And it worked. So the answer to that, if you're interested, is in the answers folder, which is on the reports tab, and you can see that, that report in there. So I would like to uh, do a quick row level formula exercise with everyone. And what we'll do is we'll start with the, um, we'll, on the reports tab, the folder called starters, 
there's a report that says row hyphen concatenate case identifier. So if you start with that, and then you add a row level formula and give it the name case identifier, say the text, the output type is text, and then I've written out the formula for you. You can also use the insert and insert fields, use uh, uh, the concatenate operator uh, and so on. So I'd like you to do this example. It looks like Kyle dropped that. Thank you, Kyle, into the chat. Um, so the, the report I'd like you to start with is in a folder called starters slash, and the report is uh, row, row hyphen concatenate case identifier. And I also have the answers on in a report on the, uh, the answers uh, tab. Uh, so Tyler is asking for the uh, org setup um, link again. Uh, so Tyler, um, <clears throat> there's uh, a bit.ly link that I will put into the chat for uh, the full set of inst install instructions. If you just go down to the third one, it's the it's a private app exchange app that has all the examples we'll do today. All right, so if you're not clear what we're doing, uh, we are doing our first exercise. So you're, um, if you've set up the dev org and installed the private app exchange app, uh, there's a folder called starters on the report tab. And I'd like you to start with a report called row concatenate case identifier. When you're in there, edit the report, add a row level formula, validate it, sort by that column. It can be a little tricky to move the columns around, these, these formula columns, but it is technically possible. If you go to the preview pane, if you click on it, it may be the easiest way to drag it to the left. All right. I hope everyone's doing okay with that. I think I might move quickly on this one. I'm just gonna go to the answers and I'll just show you what the answer looks like. So again, on the report tab, uh, this was the row concate. Uh, so this is in a folder called answers and it's the concatenate case identifier. And we can see what the output looks like. It's this column here. And you can tell that this is a formula column because of the little FX up to the left. And we can see that it's sorted because of the arrow pointing upward. So this is sorting ascending with that arrow pointing up. And you can see it's taking the account name colon, putting a space, and then it's taking the uh, case number, and then it's got a space dash space, and then it's inserting the uh, the pick list value from that priority field. So if we go in and look at that, and we just click on the case identifier column, we can see the, you know, just how simple the formula is. And I do want to point out that we are using an operator, the ampersand here, that isn't actually listed in the list of operators. So it's worth trying out. If you see a function, there's a smaller set of functions here. So 16 plus 10 plus 13. So what's that 39 functions? There are actually more functions available to use, including text functions. When Salesforce introduced this originally, they didn't support pick lists. And then they rolled out pick lists later uh, when it actually went GA, but they didn't include the text functions in the function picker for whatever reason. But clearly we're using the text function to extract that pick list value. And so when you're writing a formula like this, it's very helpful to click the validate button just to make sure that the syntax is correct. And then you go ahead and click apply and drop it onto your report. All right, so let's keep going. Um, I'd like to shift gears and go to summary formulas. So when we met last time, we talked about the win ratio or win loss ratio. Uh, and that's just, you know, if once you add your first grouping to a report, you have the ability to add a summary formula. In fact, you can have up to five of them per report. And this one is very simple for the win ratio. You take the one sum and divide it by the closed sum. Um, these summary formulas, uh, they cannot reference each other. Again, you can have up to five of them. We can sum, we can min, we can max, we can average. We can also take advantage of a unique function um, it's not quite clear that that's available to you, but you absolutely can. So when Salesforce introduced the up to three unique 
columns per report, they also gave us the ability to use the unique function within summary formulas. So in essence, you could have up to eight total unique uh, columns on a report because you have the five summary formulas and you can use unique there. Uh, so these can be used in charts. We can absolutely use these in conditional formatting. We cannot, however, use summary formula output in filters or in buckets. But if we go right into an example, so if um, you know uh, we wanted to analyze WEP, uh, sorry, rep win ratio versus the average size of deals. So it's basically building on the win ratio example from before. I have this in the answers folder, the summary win ratio with scatter plot, and I think I have it open. Of course, I don't have it open. So I'm going to just go to the folders for answers, and it's the win ratio with scatter plot. And just to show you this, um, you know, basically I've created a report. This is an opportunity report group by owner. Uh, we have a column for averaging the amount. We have that win ratio summary formula. We'll look at it in just a second. But what we've done here is just used it in an interesting way. Once you have a couple of um, things that you're summing, you can use them on a scatter plot. Uh, and we can see you know, basically who has the highest win ratio and who has the highest deal size, the, the highest average deal size. So if I go in and edit this and we just took a peek at the win ratio, the formula editor is identical to the row level formula editor with one exception, which it adds the display tab here. And the display, you choose all summary levels, grand total only, or specific groups. But uh, this formula is super simple. We can drag fields over, insert them from the left here, insert functions if we need them, and validate when we build this. So um, I'd like for us to just talk quickly about prev group val function, and then I'd like you to try it out. So the prev group val function, we use this to calculate values relative to a peer grouping. So um, in this case here, we have month over month. That's affectionately known as mom. So month over month dollar change, and we have uh, November 2019 at 3.9 million and December 2019 at 6.1. Well, we have this formula uh, over here on the right, uh, which is just calculating the, the change from uh, month to month. Uh, we're going to do an example in a minute where we're going to add a percentage of this. Um, so if we go take a look at this example, I have this in the starters uh, and we'll use this for the, the next exercise, this uh, starters report, it's the mom dollar sign change. And if I go back to the reports tab and go to the starters folder, and it's the mom dollar sign ch change. And you can see here that we have a summary formula and it's using the prev grip val. We'll take a look at it in a second, but it's using it in a way that, you know, I can create a really interesting chart with this, um, which is basically showing the month to month plus plus minus minus plus plus minus minus sort of an interesting visualization that you don't really think of when you think of Salesforce visualizations. But if I come in here and edit the report and go down to the month over month dollar sign change that formula, and we can see that this is the, this is the real heart of the matter here is this prev group val. And we have basically, uh, we're, we're using the sum of the amounts and we're saying, go grab the previous groupings, close date amount, uh, the sum of the amount. And then we're gonna subtract that from the current groupings, sum of the amount. So we're taking the current grouping and we're subtract, sub, subtracting literally the previous group value. And that syntax is pretty straightforward. And what that's doing for us is it's basically calculating this value by taking this value and subtracting it by the November value. Uh, so that's the delta in those. And when you use the prev group val function, the default is it's always going to have an offset of one, but you can actually have an offset of up to 11. So this is uh, assuming assuming that it's gonna be one, one month off or one grouping off, uh, but we can go much further. If you were to do um, a grouping of an offset of five, you'd have a, a bunch of blank spaces for those first months because you'd be comparing the fifth month with the first month or the sixth month with the first month um, uh, with that. 
So when you write this formula, if I did want to do more of an offset, why don't I show that example? So I think what we do is we do comma and is it 11? Of course, I'm probably going to mess this up. Now that looks right there. Now the question is, do we have enough data to do this? So that'll be interesting to see if we actually have enough data. So you can see that your first rows are going to be blank, of course, because it's comparing literally like year over year. But if I go ahead and run this, again, I don't know how much data we have, but it looks like we have some. But you can see here that it's basically saying, in this case, it's doing October against November. Um, so let's see if we can actually do a 12 offset. Let's see if it allows that. Okay, it said it's valid. So that would be the year over year example would be the 12. If you wanted to compare November 2020 against November of the prior year. So it's 3.9 grown to 39. So it's basically a 10 X. So the Delta on that's 35.7 million. So that looks like it's working out correctly. Uh, Michelle asked, um, can you use this when grouped by quarter as well as annual? Uh, yep, absolutely. Absolutely. We just changed the changed the grouping. So let's actually try that out. And what we can do is we're grouping by close date. So you, you do that the same. I'm just gonna make it so it doesn't go back 12 quarters because we don't have that much data. I'm just gonna do this quarter versus the private prior quarter by not including an offset. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is just change the grouping. So right now it's grouped by calendar month. Let's group it by calendar quarter and see what it looks like. So it's literally just that summary column, the close date, we're just changing the grouping, going to the down arrow, grouping the dates by something different. And if I go ahead and run that. So I'm really glad you asked because that that's, you know, just sort of a nice real life use case. Uh, so thank you, Michelle, for asking that. Um, let's actually dive into another example. I'd love for you guys to try this. That same report that I was just looking at the in the starter folder, which is called the mom dollar sign change report. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and add another summary formula. And we're going to call that formula the mom percentage change. And this is uh, an example that's relevant to Michelle's question earlier. Um, and the output type for this would be a percent. Uh, Kyle can drop the formula, which is basically saying take the amount sum and subtract the pre group val of the amount sum and then divide it by that pre group val sum. So the math all makes sense here. We're basically saying what's the delta and how much bigger is it than what the original grouping value was. Um, the answers are listed, uh, this bottom right here, it's under answers, uh, mom dollar sign change with percent change, just so that you know it's there. Uh, while we're waiting, uh, Chris had a question. Um, is there a list of all the hidden functions or are the hidden ones included in salesforce.com's help document? Yeah, title? Chris, great, great question. Um, I haven't tested them all out. There are over 80 functions yeah. that are available for use within Salesforce reporting or Salesforce formulas, I should say, because we use formulas within formula fields. Um, my sense is that many more of them can be used than are listed within the row level formulas and summary formulas. We've already seen similar examples with um, the operators. I'd love it for somebody to put together a, a compendium of all of the ones that can be used. Some of them kind of make sense. Like when Salesforce rolled out row level formulas, it didn't support pick lists. So text functions may not have been as useful. Uh, but you certainly can use text functions. I haven't tested all of them, but I've been excited to find ones, additional ones. So my suggestion would be to go to that page and help that lists all of the operators. Maybe Kyle, you could drop that in again. Uh, it's up higher on that list. You'd put it in earlier today. Yep. It's fun functions and operators. Um, I think it's absolutely get it worth getting to know those, not just for formula writing for reports, but also just across the system. So we're creating a summary formula now called month over month percentage change. So our, a second of five possible summary formulas on this particular report. Um, I'll just dump, jump into the, uh, the answers uh, here and we'll just take a look at what that answer is. So again, it's in the answers folder. 
and it's the uh, month over month dollar sign change with percentage change. And it's basically just added this next um, uh, formula, which is basically saying this 2.1 million is how much, what percentage of this 3.9. So 2.1 is a bit over half of 3.9. So that's 53%. So I feel like that's working correctly. Um, and when you write the when you write this, so if we go in and just take a look at it, this just has a little bit more in it than the last one did because we're doing a bit more math. So don't get too stressed out about the math uh, or, or sort of like repeating the same um, functions and information over and over again. It's really just, you know, it's basically saying take the, you know, 2.1 divided by the 3.9. It's basically just setting that up for you. So don't, don't get too stressed out about it. We could write a much, 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 much longer formula if you need to do have more heavy duty math. All right, so that's that example. Hope you guys uh, had some success with that. Um, I do want to jump to the parent group valve function because I think this is another one that a lot of us sort of shy away from. So we can use the parent group valve function. Um, oh, okay, Donna asked a great question. I'm sorry I didn't mention that. So she had a validation error, and this is the typical, typical error when you write your uh, when you write a formula like this. So thank you for reminding me, um, Donna. Um, when you write a summary level formula, you have to sort of say where the output's going, okay? And if you click on the display tab, you typically will choose a specific group. Now there's only one group here on this report. So why Salesforce couldn't just auto default to that group? I don't know. It should, it should be possible for them. There's only one. But Donna, if you click on the display tab and choose specific groups, and then pick the one group, then, then you should uh, not have a validation error anymore. So I'll just show you that, uh, can I, I, it looks like I can't even unselect it to show you the error, but sorry guys, I should have mentioned that when you do a summary formula, I have to choose the display output. All right, so uh, we were talking about the parent group val function. We use this to calculate values relative to a parent grouping. So guys, this is so exciting being able to do this. And we can do it in two different ways. We can do it for summary and joined reports. We can also do it for matrix reports and it's a bit more complicated for that. I'm not gonna show you that today, but I did wanna mention that for a matrix, you can do very interesting parent group val um, comparisons. So in this case, we see the example here and it's a little small on the screenshot, but basically we have uh, looks like fiscal years, and then we have fiscal quarters, or these are calendar calendar years and calendar quarters, and we have a sum of the amount, we have a record count, and we just want to calculate what is the percentage of the year's sales, and you can see 17, 20%, and so on, and the question with this math is, is it doing the math on the row count, or is it doing the math on the sum of the amount? And we could do either one, so we have to look at the formula to determine which one is doing the, the math. So you know what, I can actually tell which one it is. 115 row count into 345 is 33%. So it looks like the percentage of year sales is actually based on the percentage of the number of deals sold, not on the amount. So we might even go into this one and, and change it up. So why don't we actually do that as an example? So in this case, we have in the answers folder, a report called summary parent group val quarter percentage. And uh, so per parent group val quarter percentage of year. So if we jump in to our system and boy, do I have an awful lot of zoom windows over <laughs> overtaking my screen here. Uh, you've got to be kidding. Uh, this, oh, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of that. So basically this was the uh, parent group val uh, quarter percentage in the answers folder. And if we just go take a look at this under the hood and look at this formula, ah, now I see the issue. So instead of using the summed amount of the opportunity, it's using the row count. And that's a fine, that's a fine like use of this formula, but you might misinterpret what it's doing. Uh, so basically, this is taking um, nine into nine and give me 100%. It's really not that interesting to look at with the preview. But if we run it again, 
and see, you know, this 98 into the 306 is that 32%. Well, I could rewrite this formula to have it be based on the dollar amounts. And if I go into this, the formula again, what I would essentially be doing is taking the amount sum and I would be swapping this out for the, um, the, the row count. And it would actually go ahead and do the math this way. Um, so again, the parent group val, you're basically saying, what is the column you want to compare with? And then you're, you're, you're saying which groupings you're going to be comparing against. Um, you can have three um, summary uh, groupings on a summary report. Uh, so you want to be specific about which grouping level. This is using the, the column for the field called close date two, and it's displaying it against the, uh, the close date. So if I go ahead and, and um, accept, let's, let's validate this. I'm just changing this one just for the purpose of uh, showing that we can do this thing. So now the 98, looks like the math is exactly the same. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, anyway, I could have just cloned, I could have copied and created another formula with the same, so I could have left them side by side. Um, uh, but basically, you know, essentially what we're doing is we're taking this value and comparing it against the sum of this value. So this 64 against this uh, 348 and so on. So I thought to give you a, a good challenge to do this. Um, uh, we have a, a report in the starter folder called summary cases by industry and priority. And this is also using parent group val to come up with a percentage. This one's a little simpler. There's no dollar amount. It's just all record counts, but we're basically taking this high priority record count of five and dividing it into 67 is giving us that 7%, whereas for medium is 19 into 67 is 28% and so on. So I'd like you to start with the report that's in the starter folder called summary cases by industry and priority. I'd like you to add a summary formula. Uh, called cases by priority percentage within industry. And then this is the output that we're looking for with the parent group val. And Kyle can drop that into the chat. And then uh, as uh, Donna had asked before, we can we want to specify the display on the on the display subtab in the formula editor. We want to choose the group priority and that's where the, we're going to display. And we do have the answers in the answer folder. It's called summary cases by industry and priority. And I'll show that in a second. So we're just adding a formula to this starter report called summary cases by industry and priority. And we're gonna add a summary formula that calculates the percentage from one subgrouping up compared to its parent grouping. Uh, great question from Tim. If you were typing this from scratch, how would I know to refer to row count? I, you know, gosh, it's... Uh, I think this is where, um, and you probably heard me say in the last session, it's really good to use the insert buttons when doing dealing with formulas. Mm -hmm. If you're doing any cross object formulas, 100%, you want to use the insert buttons. Um, but even just for what you mentioned earlier, Tim, of the difference between formula writing on a custom formula field being slightly different than formula writing within a report, using those insert buttons will help you make sure that you put the right because how, how would you know it's row count here and it might be referred to as record count somewhere else. So I, I typically don't type my formulas. Uh, this is using buttons to insert values. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so Tim is, uh, two of you are saying that display isn't giving the group priority. So let me see what I did wrong here, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go into the reports tab. And we'll go into the folder for starter. And let's see, uh, it's record count in the field list. You know what, why don't I just go to the answers and
and we'll just take a take a peek here. I wonder if I just referred to it wrong. And the display. So I'm able to choose the display of priority. So um, uh, then let's go back to the beginning and see why this is working differently for you, for you. So it's possible that I made uh, mix something up between the, the two um, reports. And for that, I apologize if that's true. Uh, so I'm gonna go into that starter report and we're gonna go ahead and add a, another column here. So we'll add a summary formula. And we said, uh, we're add summary formula case percent by priority. So I'm gonna, case percent by, I'm not gonna write the whole thing. And we said the output is a percent. And then you have to choose specific groups first. So let's see, uh, Kyle, you drop this into the chat. Thank you. Yep, I can drop it again. No, no, I got it, I got it. Uh, that's not it. <laughs> My copy and paste is just not working these days. It's the strangest thing. Okay, so let's actually just build it from scratch. So we've got record count. So we're going to insert that, divide it by, and we're going to do is the parent group val. So on the functions tab, the parent group val and the pre group val are at the very, very bottom. Uh, so in this case, we're going to choose parent group val. When I insert it, it puts in some junk in there. I don't need all this junk. So I'm going to specify the grouping level here. And this was what, account industry? Oh, so this is the grouping field here, the account industry. And it's interesting that it's listed them out separately here. So let's see what we get. Okay, it put it in like that. And then we had row counts as the, uh, so we'll insert that. Okay, of course that overwrote my open parentheses. And now we get the error. You must select a, con a context for the grouping. We select specific groups, and then we're gonna choose priority here. So I apologize for you guys getting that error. This looks like this is probably gonna work correctly for us. I'll go ahead and, and run it. We can just see if the math worked out. Here's that 7%, the 28% that we talked about earlier. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, I do wanna show you one more, uh, one more thing here with this, which is, uh, it looks like I've got an extra slide in there. Or did I go backwards somehow? <laughs> um, Okay, let's just talk about cross-block formulas for a second. Um, so these are available in joined reports. Do not shy away from these. These are super cool. It's essentially a summary formula, but it lets you do summary math across blocks. We can sum, we can min, we can max, we can average. I believe we can do uniques as well uh, within this. And you can, for whatever reason, have more of these per block than you'd think. Um, so normally you can only have five summary formulas per report, but for some reason there are extra ones available within joined reports. And this gives us the power to calculate across blocks. They cannot reference each other, but you just essentially rewrite the same formula and add to it if you were otherwise wanting to reference another formula. It's just the way to get around it. So the example that we looked at last time is one that I'll show today, which is basically taking the, um, you know, we have two blocks, our past history of, of wins and losses, and we have a win ratio. And then we have another block showing all the open opportunities. Well, we can actually do the math multiplying the win rate times the open opportunities across the blocks. And this is the example here. So we have a, our first block in the joined report, which has last year's total amount one plus the win percentage. And then we have the second block showing our open pipeline and we create a cross block formula that just does the math. So it's essentially 75% times the 21 million is doing this math for us, which is kind of cool. It's a way of doing a projection essentially. Uh, and we can see this in our system. We have uh, on the answers folder, the, um, cross block win rate with projection. And so you can basically see this here. We could add a chart to it. This would be great for a scatter plot. What I can do is go right into here and edit this. 
uh, scroll down and just to show you the formula, the formula looks a little different when you work with a cross block formula, the references are different. So block zero in a, in array format, the first item is a zero, the second item is a one. Salesforce is using essentially array language to specify which block. It's either block zero or block one. So we're basically taking that we're doing the math, the one sum divided by the closed sum from the first block, that's our win ratio. And then we're multiplying it by the second block, the sum of the amount. And that's what's doing the math for us. Uh, so that's a cross block uh, formula. So hopefully that's uh, useful to you. I really like using these with scatter plots myself. All right, so um, we have the uh, the answer for that uh, in in your uh, in your system from that uh, sample formulas. This is what this one looks like. All right, so just as a as a recap, uh, we talked about some formula use cases. We uh, talked about what is a formula, types of formulas, a little bit about functions and operators. We dug into a couple of functions today: pre group val and parent group val, which are incredibly useful. I think I was afraid of them for a bunch of years. I just didn't use them, uh, but uh, just super useful. We, we really focused today on row level formulas, summary formulas, and cross block formulas. Um, I did think to share, so Aaron and Evan, who write a blog called Report Force, have done really, really nice job writing on all kinds of interesting, very, you know, sometimes deep topics about reports and dashboards. Uh, they wrote something in 2019 of getting started with report formula. So a nice written summary. Uh, this is reportforce.blog. Uh, we do have one more formula session and I'm asking for your help. Uh, if you have any interesting examples of cool formulas that you've used to solve reporting challenges, send them my way. Uh, really be interested to hear and perhaps showcase some of them. Maybe we could spend a few minutes talking about it before the session. I'd really love to have examples that you guys have done, you know, sort of real world uh, things that you've solved. And it could be anything. Don't think your example is too simple. Um, they're all great to solve a problem. Probably what I'd be interested in is what's the, what was the thing you were trying to solve? Like what's the business case? What were some of the considerations? And then how did you solve it? So, um, uh, I also thought to ask you guys to put into the chat, if you have any other report and dashboard topics, you know, we, I, I haven't listed anything beyond the second date in March for the dashboard dojo. Uh, to date, we've covered uh, dashboards, we've covered filters, we've covered joint reports, we've done a bunch, we, we talked about nonprofit service pack, we've talked about formulas. Uh, so we've covered a lot of ground in the dojo and we have all the past recordings on the um, dashboard dojo site on the resources page. But if any of you have ideas for upcoming sessions that you'd like to recommend, uh, things you're struggling with, things you're interested in, uh, please drop them into chat and be super helpful. I'd love to make sure that these sessions are, are as useful for you as possible. So if you have ideas for reports or dashboard topics for future dojo sessions, please share them with us in the chat. Um, I did think to mention we have two classes coming up uh, June, um, uh, the five day admin class that I'll teach and the two day hands on report and dashboard workshop that I teach that will be, uh, we'll do those right in June right after the summer release goes live. Uh, so Michelle, um, why don't we do this so if you. Um, you could find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle's right here. You could also find me at uh, dcarns at opfocus.com uh, to send along ideas. I'd really be interested in ideas you have for, if you have cool examples for the March 24th session, or if you have ideas for future dojo topics. Um, but we do have a few more minutes if you'd like to drop any more questions in. Thank you, Kyle, for dropping my Twitter handle in there. Arena, it was a pleasure having you. So we'll try to come up with a couple more examples for the March 24th session. If you're around, I'd love to have you join us. We're gonna go creep one hour later in the day. We're gonna go to, to 12 noon. Uh, I think that's what we chose. Or was it one o'clock, Kyle? I don't remember on the East Coast. Um, Double check, I believe it was 11. Not okay. positive. No, I think we actually pushed it back a little bit further. Yeah, okay. um, uh, for our West Coast friends, just trying to find the right time of day. Um, but uh, we can double check now. 
Uh, March 24th at 12. Oh, sorry. 12. It's March 4th at, is at 11. Uh, no, that's March 4th is today. Yep. <laughs> so uh, March 24th is when? At uh, 12. 12 p.m. Okay. Eastern time. Okay. Yeah, it is at noon. Okay. Um, and just to share with you, you know, there's some nice examples here. I try to write a description for each one within the answers folder. It may be worth just sort of digging in and seeing, you know, how things were created, uh, trying them, you know, playing with it, trying to do additional, additional things. You know, hopefully these samples are useful for you. All right. Well, um, don't see any other questions for right now. So guys, we'll look forward to seeing you on the 24th. Hope you, hopefully you'll join us then. You can register on dashboarddojo.com. So have a great rest of your day today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, everyone.